An empty canvas is the starting point for something extraordinary. Touched by the paint which was gracefully smudged by a paintbrush in the hands of the creator, an hour or maybe days might pass before a masterpiece is complete to bestow upon the eyes of everyone in the gallery. Paintings are one of the many forms of art which leads back to the source with few connections. Take the Mona Lisa for example. Its creator stems back to Leonardo da Vinci in 1503. Not that big of an Easter hunt. However, what about a big project? Say a skyscraper. Maybe the tallest building in the world. a day, seven days a week. We had about uh, 100 people, architects, engineers, designers, and, and so on. But we had 12,000 people on site every day at the peak. There is a new floor every three days. But the higher you go, the more problems you face. The biggest is the desert wind. The Burj Khalifa, started in 2004 and finished in 2010. The creation of three men, Adrian Smith, Marshall Strabala, and George J. Efstathio. All those who have assisted in the Burj Khalifa's construction are to be rightfully accredited, but this is a case where the sum is more recognized than its parts, and that's because there are too many roles to divide that sense of love and care equally. In terms of art and creation, what makes us appreciate one thing over another is human connection. When you see the Mona Lisa, you know a person made it. When you step inside the mall, you know people made it. There's a stronger connection to that singular person than there is a group of people. Your favorite game was most likely created by a team of skilled individuals. Usually the bigger the budget, the bigger the team. You have designers, sound engineers, artists, programmers, and producers, and those are just the main roles. And that team is led by only a handful of people. Depending on whether or not the team is solely focused on development of their game, they will either work with a publisher to boost a project's recognition or perform all strategies in-house. There are pros and cons for each, but let's focus on the ones relating to human connection, starting off with the first choice of collaborating with a publisher. When studios work with publishers, the devs can strictly center their attention on their game, not having to rely on marketing and sales, so the effort is 100% directed towards fields of expertise, ending in a more efficient result for each role. The caveat to this plan of action, however, is an increase in people involved, and the people involved are only a temporary part of the process. The connection becomes more diluted, and it's not just the amount of people either. Decisions made by different people from each sector of both teams also muddy the waters. This applies for big teams, but what about small teams or solo devs? Do they experience the same issues? In the case of solo developers, the human connection is more concentrated in the sense that a majority of what you see is coming from that one person. A solo dev that wears all the hats in this scenario does more than just development. They also focus on marketing, sales, copy, things that are usually delegated to the publisher. They are the studio, their game is them, so they have a stronger human connection. Or so you might think. Here's the thing. There is an obvious problem that brings human connection almost to a halt. That problem is the actual medium itself. I read an article by Chris Zukowski on six interesting lessons from the Domekeeper launch, and in the last section, he states that people don't really check the back catalog on indie devs and studios, as opposed to other forms of art such as music and video media. People are much more willing to investigate a musician or a director's past content than they are of an indie dev or studio. Paraphrasing, his theory is that people are informally yet personally introduced to the artists through hearing their voice and seeing their face and name, somewhat like a virtual handshake. Same can apply to the director of a film, or as I mentioned before, a painter. People also have a sense of how the art was created, even if they aren't knowledgeable on all the intricacies of producing and directing. For video games, it's an entirely different story. When someone mentions their favorite game in passing, how often is a team brought up? Do you ever hear of how much of a genius the lead developer is or the founder of the studio? Does the development cycle of different roles collaborate and get mentioned mid-conversation? Most likely not. Names are never brought up. Maybe certain mechanics or details of the game, possibly even the story and how well it molds with the world building, but those responsible are left almost anonymous. So the medium of video games surely does not receive the same amount of love compared to every other art form out there. As of right now, both large teams and solo devs are operating on the same playing field. Does that mean large teams win by default because of their abundant resources? 
not necessarily. Since small teams and solo devs have fewer numbers amongst their ranks, it's easier to get in contact with them and get to know them. Generally speaking, solo developers aren't the most extroverted people, so their face, voice, or name won't be the first thing you hear or see when looking up their game or even the studio. Although there are less hoops to jump through when getting straight to the source, human connection only really matters if something is able to catch the audience's attention. That attention ultimately boils down to something about the game, whether that be a captivating story, an enticing video game mechanic system, or both. When people take interest, eventually the word will get out that the entire project was made or is being made by one person. And that mere fact alone is intriguing itself. The ratio of things created by one person as opposed to many that we interact with on a daily basis is skewed far more towards team-based projects. Hearing something was created by someone's lonesome is honorable and makes someone more inclined to view that person with a quick Google search. It also gives our brain the excuse of not doing as much work looking up a solo dev rather than a whole team. Now for the tricky part. What exactly can devs do to strengthen human connection while being handicapped from the start? And how can they keep that human connection healthy through downtime and development cycles? Let's start with the most basic step and that is simply making yourself or yourselves known. Introduce yourself or the team behind the project so we all know you are human and that you exist. Why is this step important? Because as the fault of our design of being human, we often overlook the fact that things we enjoy and use are created by other human beings. Skipping the basics almost immediately sets you up for failure because the first thing going through the audience's mind is why should I care? Now that the introductions are over, we can discuss the building blocks of human connection. Let's use relationships as an example. A person that means the absolute most to someone, whether that be a mother, father, sibling, etc., withholds a few commonalities. The first is how much time is spent in their presence. People who spend the most amount of time together eventually form a bond and that bond becomes tighter over time. Within that allotted time, emotional investment compounds in the things being done with said people, which in turn is something of value. It's sort of like an equation. The more time and emotional investment that is put into a relationship, the more valuable it becomes for each party, thus making human connection much stronger. Relating this back to the topic at hand, the game created can all satisfy the time being spent with the player and hopefully creating emotional investment and value. However, these three key points can expand beyond the constraints of playing the game and are most important regarding human connection. A few very practical ways devs can spend time with their audience outside of their game would be through live streams, online events, and creating different forms of content. These can all be done before and after the release of their title. The more personal and interactive, the better. Developing emotional investment during that time can be done as simply as showing the audience that you hear and see them. Very cliche, but it works. Mentioning someone by name, talking to someone directly, the small things go a long way and do wonders for building emotional investment. If these two things are done effectively, then as a byproduct, value should be distributed across a majority of the audience. Hopefully anything I've said has helped or at least given you an idea of where to begin and focus on your journey for creating a better connection with the audience. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. All that being said, I am an intelligent gamer and I will see you in the next video.